Howdy from down on the farm. Welcome back to another Herbal Monograph Monday. Today we are talking about chamomile. Hey, if you're new here, my name is Sian Cosell from St. Fiacra's Farm. And every Monday we are going over a picture of an individual herb and today it's going to be chamomile so before we start I just want to remind everyone I'm not a doctor I don't play a doctor on YouTube either so I'm just like you I'm a learning herbalist looking to know more about the plants that God put around us for every video I prepare by double checking the information and knowledge that I have against stuff in my books and by other herbalists to make sure that I'm giving you correct information. I start by printing out our Materia Medica sheet available on our website in our free membership area. There will be a link down below in the show notes. So it looks something like this. There's a spot to draw a picture or preserve a part of the plant and then write down things like the name of the plant, the plant family, common names, the scientific name, all the medicinal uses, how to plant it, when to plant it, where to plant it, um, almost everything. I am going to be adding an extra sheet to this soon to, so that there's plenty of space to write down all the medicinal properties of the plant. I'm finding that a little paragraph right here is not enough to write down all the notes that I would like to write. So. I fill out our little form before I chat with you. I basically go over what I write down and what I find. Um, that includes stuff I know, stuff I learned in the process of filling out the form. And then I save these and I'm making a notebook for myself so that I can reference stuff quick and easy and I don't have to spend the hour or two or more that it takes to fill out the sheet by doing research. So with that, let's get on to chamomile. Uh, some books I referenced today is The Good Living Guide to Medicinal Tea. This is a pretty good book. It's really basic. There's recipes in here and really quick overviews of lots of medicinal herbs. And it keeps it pretty straight and forward just about the science of the herbs. And we don't get into all the stories and nonsense that can sometimes come with herbalism. So a good book. There's a few choice words in here I prefer not to be in there, but for the most part, it's a good book. So we reference that one today. Another favorite of mine is Homegrown Tea by Cassie Liver's Edge. And that is also another good, just quick rundown of how to plant the specific herb and how to use it specifically for tea. So this isn't totally medicinal in terms of properties of the plant, but it is very in depth about how to use plants for tea. One of my absolute favorite authors is Jan Berry, the, known as the Nerdy Farm Wife online. She has so many great, wonderful recipes, and again, just straightforward, scientific. So this, as it says, there's 101 easy recipes. You can tell I reference it a lot. So I'll put the link to that below. And one more, Homegrown Herbs, a quick reference guide for lots of herbs to grow around the house. So. Those are the ones that I use today to come up with today's herbal monograph on chamomile. So resources will be down below. Most of you probably know what chamomile looks like. Most of us recognize the flower. It's a daisy-like flower, but it's much, much smaller than a daisy. I'll try and put a picture of a daisy up here next to the chamomile so you can see the difference. But it's got this yellow in the middle, little bits in there, and then the white petals on the outside. They're very delicate. And it has this really bushy leaf down here below. It's important not to confuse these with pineapple weed that looks really similar and it grows wild around here. But it's much smaller and bushy. It doesn't get as tall as chamomile. So this I know is chamomile because we planted it out here last year and it reseeded. So pineapple weed, tiny. Chamomile, kind of a medium flower. Daisies are bigger. But they all generally look the same. There are two common types of chamomile, Roman chamomile and German chamomile. There's also a Spanish chamomile flower. That one's not quite as common, at least here in the States. Roman chamomile is a perennial. Well, German chamomile is an annual. 
since I'm not so very good at my Latin and my botanical slash scientific names for plants, I'm going to put it here and I'm not even going to try it today. If you've seen some of my other videos, you'll know that I just butcher things, so I don't know if that's entertaining. If you'd like me to try, let me know. If just the word below here is fine, let me know that too. I'll accommodate. The parts of the plant that are used are usually the flowering tops and a few of the leafy greens. Chamomile is both drying and a cooling herb. So drying, since chamomile is cooling, it makes a great iced tea in the summertime because it's gonna help you in the heat of the summer naturally cool your body down. It's a very aromatic herb and it's also a bitter tasting herb. It's not super sweet. And the good news about the bitter part is that bitters help your digestive tract. And so chamomile is also helpful for the digestive system. Things like gas and colic even in young children. When chamomile is planted, the seeds are super, super tiny and they're very hard to germinate. So they have about a, they have about a 50% germination rate. So you might want to plant extra if you're planting by seed. You can direct sow those into the ground or you can put them in soil blocks and transplant later. They take about two weeks to germinate from seed and you can also divide them in the spring to propagate them. If we were to take these and split them up and move them around, these just self-seeded. I didn't plant these here. We could propagate these even more into the garden and I may just do that. Just transplant them and get them out of the way because we're gonna put vegetable crops in here when I get to it. So these are kind of in the way. We'll just move them and propagate them more. As you can see, they like full sunlight. So they're, this is like the best spot for them on the farm because we get the most sunlight right here. That's why our garden is here. And they like a drier soil. We definitely have that here. We have a lot of clay here in the soil. Now they also like well-drained soil and we don't have that right here where they are, but I think the reason that they propagated right here where they did is because the chickens get moved through here and so they're constantly tilling the soil, moving around, and I think that the seed just stayed on the surface. And so <laughs> I had to find a new spot. The seeds just propagated right there. The chickens took care of our compacted soil for us. Let's turn around. Chamomile in front of me now instead of behind me. So chamomile will bloom starting in June. Oh, it's June now. And going until the first frost. So you can keep clipping flowers to preserve them and they will continue to come back. The more you clip, the more flowers you're going to get. Chamomile is harvested by hand and let me tell you what last year I had this big idea that we were going to propagate a whole bunch of chamomile and so we did a test run in the greenhouse and then we planted a row out in the garden and I did not realize it was so difficult to harvest so chamomile is not something we're probably going to grow here on the farm for our tea business it's more of a hobby and for maybe a cup here and there because it takes a long time to cut it so you can do you do it by hand you can use uh, some kitchen shears to clip off the top if you don't mind a bit of the stem or you can get a chamomile rake and i will try and put a picture of one here or a link down in the show notes of what that looks like so it's like a little claw with a bucket under it and so it goes underneath the chamomile and you pull up and the flowers fall into the little bucket. So that goes a lot faster. I actually used a Pampered Chef, uh, I don't know what they're called. So it's got a black handle with little tongs in it and it holds vegetables down while you cut them. I'll see if I can put the name right here of it after I find it. So I used one of those and that helped a little bit because I wasn't hand plucking each one. I could get quite a few, but it didn't have the bucket under it. So maybe one of you can come up with a handy tool with the Pampered Chef thing attached to a bucket and we'll be good to go. <laughs> when you dehydrate chamomile, it is super, super, super delicate and it's very hard to get looking nice. 
um, but the flavor is excellent. So just note that, that if you're going to be drying chamomile, expect it to be real delicate and be super gentle with it. German chamomile gets up to 24 inches tall, while Roman chamomile gets up to 8 to 10 inches tall. I'm thinking I planted German chamomile here because it gets pretty tall. I don't actually remember. Chamomile does best in zones four through nine and it says to space them 10 inches apart but let me show you how God spaced them because they're not 10 inches apart here. So we've got one, actually it's one plant, one plant here and one plant here. That might be a foot. There's another plant and then another plant. My tiny helper's back. 10 inches might be okay, but it doesn't have to be 10 inches apart. They will still grow and do super well. So chamomile is super, super, super safe to use for just about anybody and very useful for so many things. But there's one caution. It is part of the ragweed family. So if you have issues with hay fever or an allergy of that kind, you're going to want to use some caution with chamomile. I can tell you from experience, <laughs> as much as our chamomile tea is super popular, the farmer and I both have issues with chamomile. And while that's not super common, it is quite the trial when trying to blend tea that's so popular. Chamomile will make my throat swell, um, just an allergic reaction to chamomile. And just like anyone can have a reaction to certain things. Just want to exercise caution there. If you don't have a problem with that kind of a plant, then you probably will be just fine with chamomile. Most people are. So now it's time for the fun part. I'm going to list off all the things the chamomile is good for. Um, I'd love to know if you like the list of things that it's good for or if you would like something more in depth on how to use that for those specific things um, let me know so that i'm giving you the information you need just leave me a note in the comments below so chamomile is a sedative it's also a nervine which works on the nervous system that means that it's calming and soothing it's an anti-inflammatory it aids with digestion it can be used as a sleep aid it's the children's herb so note that because that's very important that it's gentle enough and helpful enough for children not all herbs are that way. It also helps relieve stress and anxiety. It works as a sleep aid for those same reasons. It also assists skin issues like rashes and scratches. It's a pain reliever, stress reducer, fights inflammation, fights infections. It's a relaxant, assists with nausea, irritability, restlessness, insomnia, gas, colds, flu, teething, colic, burns, rashes, conjunctivitis, PMS pain, fevers, infections, and it even helps with whiny children and or adults. From experience, we've used our chamomile-based tea with our teething toddler and it did wonders for calming her down and just letting her body deal with the teeth coming in. Super, super helpful for you mamas out there or anyone looking to help your toddlers. I wrote down the dosage for the tea out of the medicinal tea book I showed you earlier. I'm just reading to make sure I got this right for you. If your child is under two, one half to one teaspoon of tea. Two to four years old is two teaspoons of tea. Four to seven years old is one tablespoon of tea. And seven to 12 years old is two tablespoons of tea. Now that's a medicinal dosage of tea. That's not like a cup of tea. But of course, if the smaller the child, the more caution you're gonna wanna use when you give them tea. Just start really small. You can always add more later if you feel it's necessary. But with chamomile, it really doesn't take much. When our toddler was between two and three, I gave her a dropper full of chamomile tea with some lavender and calendula so I had a couple other things in it. I gave her that. 
I think those are a half a teaspoon to one teaspoon. So that's like half the dosage that the book recommends. And she fell asleep in like five to ten minutes. And the tooth eventually came through and we didn't have crabby toddler. So that was super cool and it really didn't take very much. It's nice to know that there's a safe, useful herb to help calm children and to help calm the mamas too because you can drink that too not just them you know if they're driving you crazy because of the teething and stuff and your nerves are a little haywire chamomile works too speaking of toddlers what you doing tiny love get out of the out of the wheelbarrow we're not playing in the so with that what do you think you're going to do first with chamomile are you going to plant it are you going to buy some already dried and put it to use? What are you going to make with it? Let us know. We would love to see what you're doing. There are so many things to do with it. You can make a tea. You can make a tincture. You can make a salve or a lotion, cider vinegar, a syrup, an elixir, an ointment or a cream. Use it as a foot soak or in a bath in a sleeping pillow. Make chamomile honey or lin <laughs> liniment. Honey good, liniment bad, I guess or use it in a potpourri. So if you would like a recipe for one of those things and would like us to do a video on it, let us know and we will do that for you. So thanks for joining us on the farm. See you next time. And we will see you next time. Say Fiacra's farm. Fiacra. 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 Thanks for joining us on the farm.